Hey everybody, my name's Zach. I'm the head brewer and owner here at Inner North Brewing Co. in Brunswick. Welcome to the December subscriptions pack. We're a week later than normal this month because uh, we're going to be a week later than normal next month thanks to holidays. So we thought better to have the, uh, the five week break now. And uh, trust me, it's worth the wait. We've got a good pack for you this month. Uh, one that hopefully Melbourne weather, it's pissing down, will, uh, will allow you to enjoy a more summery pack. Uh, coming up. Uh, what's been going on here at Inner North? We've, uh, we've got a lot of Christmas events coming up. We've got uh, the 12 beers, 12 taps of beer mist coming up where we've got 12 single kegs going on uh, this Saturday. Where there's a special Christmas lunch that uh, Tim's put together with the Vic Hotel that uh, we still got tickets for. Make sure you grab those up quick if you're interested. Basically 12 single keg beers, that uh, some that are old favorites, some that are never been released before, some that will never be released again, all just all 12 taps coming off for the day with these two of 12 special beers going on for the weekend. Um, so check that out. We've also got our graduation party next on the 19th of December. And what else am I missing, Tim? Something else? That's it for the, for the public, right? Mm. Yeah, so... Hopefully uh, we don't have any issues with uh, anything it's next month and we have a, we can ease into the Christmas season. Um, let's get on to the pack, shall we? All right. This month, we uh, the core beer that we've chosen for the pack is our When Life Gives You Lemongrass. We've also chosen a new release that we've done that we've also released in cans called Time Loop, a Hesefeisen. And we have our... A very special beer, and this is the reason why the pack's uh, one of the reasons the pack's all a week behind. We are releasing a barrel aged sour that we are super happy with. Um, it's a blend of two barrels. We'll get into that more in, in greater detail. But first, let's start with the lemongrass. Right, we'll start with the lemongrass. When life gives you lemongrass, uh, when life gives you lemongrass is a rice ale. Meaning that we use, it's not gluten free. It means we use 20% rice in the uh, mash to basically the rice uh, helps boost the alcohol without um, bringing in um, any additional flavors. So it's a way to make a real crisp, dry beer. It's very popular in Japanese lagers. Um, so we use it in our ale. Um, and this beer was originally brewed for good days on Sydney Road, and uh, which is a Vietnamese restaurant. And it's brewed using lemongrass and ginger. Quite subtle, um, both those flavors. I mean, it's there, but a lot of people get put off by the name thinking it's going to be some crazy, weird, hipster craft beer. But really, it's a, uh, a thirst-quenching summer smasher that pairs really well with fried food. So on the nose, loads of lemongrass. I mean, that's pretty much all you get. A little bit of ginger pepperiness there. Take a sip and you get that. One thing I love about this beer is the lemongrass gives the the idea of sweetness without the beer actually being sweet. It's actually quite a, a very dry. We do a really low temperature mash to get a really dry finish to that beer. It's uh, It's got a cult following at the brewery. It's probably the beer we're most famous for. Um, and uh, yeah, you'll, you know, enjoy. It's... Pick a good summary day. I recommend it with Japanese food. Mm. Delicious. 4.3% that one. Next beer. Time Loop. So, Time Loop we call a Hesefeisen, which is a style we made up. It's uh, a much better style than cold IPA though, which is a made up style that makes no sense. Uh, haze of Eisen is basically taking aspects of a hazy pale, uh, that being a like late hot petitioned pale ale, and aspects of a Hefeweizen and combining them together, uh, mainly the Hefeweizen yeast. Ooh, Tim's going to keep going. I'm going to keep talking because we just our plaques for the graduation day have just arrived. It's all happening here today at the brewery. Hmm. So, uh, Time Loop was one of the one of the few beers that we decided just to go straight into cans with. We did a single keg experiment with it, but this is a little different. Um, but yeah, so basically, it's late hop additions and hefeweizen yeast. So it's have a have a smell. On the nose, 
really different than hazies. On the nose, you're going to get a lot of uh, yeast esters and characteristics like clove. Um, so we had El Jefe uh, last month, I think you guys had El Jefe. Um, same yeast, um, except now we've added a bunch of hops. So you just have a, have a sniff. It smells clovey, yeasty, estery, a little banana. Mmm. We're aiming for tropical fruit salad vibes. So if they have the vibes and yeasts, you often get like banana esters. Um, we thought that would pair really well with some of the other tropical fruits you can get from other hops. And, um, and I think we were right. So you get those tropical fruit salad vibes. Real, the, real, the main difference between this and a hazy is it has a really dry finish as opposed to that juicy finish and crisp mouthfeel. Um, what we didn't quite account for in the recipe design was the amount of clove we were going to get out of it. Um, we tried the temperature control to try to get more bananas rather than clove, but we ended up with a bit more clove so that you kind of have that tropical fruit up on the front of the palate and then you have a sort of a spicy dry finish. Delicious. I'm actually, I haven't had this since we canned it. It's quite, quite good. Um, but yeah, that's 5%. It's available in cans, available in bottles. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Last, but definitely not least, um, um, we have, we're calling it Blend 42, because it came out of a barrel that had 42 written on it. And as we know, 42 is the ultimate answer to the, the ultimate answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. And um, basically, we we have to, what we have here is we have a blend of two different sours that we've done. Blend from two barrels. So one barrel was a barrel that previously held our I do not fear the darkness Russian Imperial Stout, and before that it held rye whiskey. Um, and so into that barrel we put uh, a red ale base into that barrel and inoculated it with bacteria um to have it sour i made the red ale a little bit too strong alcoholic wise so it's actually required a lot of aging to get to the uh, flavor profile that we were after so it's been in the barrel i want to say 18 months at least at least 18 months really long wait on this one um the other barrel has been about six months maybe 10 months 10 months um the uh, my producer is telling me um 10 months in the other barrel. So the other barrel was a, was an ex-fortified wine barrel that uh, our friend uh, friends at Tidy Town Wines and Little Brunswick Wine Company um, sourced for us. And so we basically gave that fortified wine barrel light reds and then added uh, a dark ale, uh, like a, not super dark, but a dark ale base. And then we then inoculated that with um, a bunch of bacteria, mostly lactobacillus, but some bretomyces as well. And that's been in there for 10 months. So they both tasted great. One of them, the, the red ale didn't quite have as much zing as we wanted. And the dark ale was, had plenty of sour going on. So blending them together, we was just the perfect combination because the red had just the most amazing aromatics and then the, the, the dark ale had um, the right, the right uh, amount of acidity to just sort of make it really work. So blending, if you don't know, is really like, whenever you're doing barrel aged sours, uh, blending is really common because it's very rare that beer comes from a single barrel. It's more that you get from the different bacteria and the different barrel cultures, you get the beer you want and then you combine them. So all that said, just have a little sniff and a taste. Oh man, <laughs> just gonna give it a little stir. I love the aromatics on this. Like people always get annoyed that we don't do enough sours at our bar. And it's because I don't like the, what I call the cheap sours, which are ones that you, you quickly whip up for a, an easy summer quencher. But the old school European sours and the barrel sours, they're worth it. They're totally worth it. And you just get so much character out of it.
but yeah, so you, there's no fruit in this, but apart from the fact that it was in a fortified wine barrel, and so you just get lots of dark, dark fruits, bit of caramel. Hmm. Ah, oh, that's good. I'm really, we're, we're, we're very proud of this beer. It's absolutely delicious. Um, and it's our Christmas present to you because um, I don't know what we're going to sell it for, but it's just say it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you should brag to your friends that you got this in your subscription. But, um, plenty of sourness on the front of the tongue, but it doesn't, doesn't burn the throat or anything. Um, a little bit, a little bit of acetic acid in there, a little bit of funk, um, but just really well balanced, rounded, sour, blended sour beer. Like, mm. Again, I'm getting, getting like dark cherry out of that as well. Mm. It's good. Uh, 4.6%. Don't drink this on, don't crack this on your own unless you're really into your sour beers. This is one to take to a Christmas party and share with friends. Um, cause, uh, a little goes a long way with beer like this, but uh, enjoy this one. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, guys. Um, yeah, so that's that's the roundup right there. Um, if uh, we don't catch you guys again soon, um, hope you have a good Christmas. Hope you have a good end of the year. Hope the holiday season's not stressing you out like it is stressing us out. And uh, we'll. Uh, We'll see you guys again in January. I, like I said, January subscriptions will be coming out probably the second Friday of January. Um, and we're trying to, going to try to get that lined up. I'm going away for a couple of weeks in January, so but I'm going to try to get it lined up before I leave so that the rest of the team can get them out in time. And uh, yeah, thank you again for subscribing and recommend it to your friends for Christmas presents. We'd love that. And thank you for your support all of 2021. And here's hoping that we have a better 2022. Thanks. Bye.